My name is Ben, and I'll be talking about the physics derivation graph in this presentation. So starting off um, sort of with how physics knowledge has been historically recorded, uh, we can look to encyclopedias, uh, peer-reviewed journal articles, and textbooks, uh, basically linear presentations in a sort of statically presented format. More recently, there's been a development in the World Wide Web where we have these ideas of hyperlinks. That allows us to show and document the relations between different topics in physics. Um, and this generalizes to any topic, then it can be expressed in writing. Um, and so you can hyperlink different topics. Uh, and that, I would claim, is a way of more accurately presenting the relations between information. Now that also means that there's some complexity in how you navigate that because it's not linear, but it's more intuitive for the user to sort of follow their curiosity. So in this presentation, I'm going to focus on sort of building on that concept, um, but specific to the domain of physics. And I think physics is, has some unique attributes that we can leverage. So specifically, you can think of the text description of a concept, and it can often be described using a mathematical expression. That expression uh, is related to other mathematical expressions via a set of mathematical steps. And the point of the physics derivation graph project is to document those expressions and steps, and that forms a graph which can be then presented to the interested reader. So I'm going to start with a little example here. So we have a picture of a uh, animated wheel and uh, it's tracking around and what's, what's really going on is there's a relation between linear frequency and uh, angular frequency. So we have a text associated with that and the text has some quantitative relations in the text. We can talk about what steps relate these different derivation, these different expressions, and we can write those out more explicitly. So here we see there's a sort of expansion from the uh, simple sort of picture to the text to a set of steps, and each step has an operation being performed and an associated expression. This is our first leap. And then we realize that those sort of descriptions of the steps and expressions could be related as a graph where each of the nodes is a expression and the edges are sort of the relations between the expressions. But this isn't very clear, this graph representation, because it doesn't actually say what the edge is doing. We can introduce the idea of a inference rule or the inference rule tells uh, the action being performed on a given expression. So then we have this alternating mathematical expression with the inference rule to another expression and so forth. And then there's a third step, a third type of note here that you see in gold. Those are called feeds. So these are sort of arguments to the inference rule that tell you more about the action being performed or relating the different expressions. My claim here is that in the physics derivation graph, this type of representation for mathematical physics is helpful to readers to make steps very explicit, and we can uh, use a computer algebra system to validate each of those steps because the inference rules are specific and, and discrete. What does that validation look like? Well, there's a variety of different ways of sort of capturing the inference rules. But the essential idea is that there's some uh, specific inference rule that may take some input expressions in addition to some feeds, and then checks the validity that the desired output or stated output is in fact what happens when you apply that inference rule. So here is sort of using a pseudo Python type representation, but there's different computer algebra systems we could use like uh, Sage and, and SymPy. So the point of this here is to validate that the step is in fact carried out correctly. 
Now we can chain these uh, steps together and inference rules into a, a full derivation. And so you get something that looks like this graph here with different types of nodes being used. So in terms of the physics derivation graph uh, jargon, there's again three types of nodes, the expressions and the inference rules and the feeds. The feeds are the arguments to the inference rules and the inference rules relate the various expressions uh, in the derivation. So the way that I think about the uh, graph is that there's actually a sequence of steps and each step has one inference rule and uh, either an input or an output expression. So to think of this derivation as a sequence of steps, we can sort of highlight in purple here what the sequence is uh, on the graph. But in general, we're just worried about what is the graph presentation. While you can do this for a single derivation, the idea extends very naturally to having multiple derivations and their relations among those derivations because they have shared uh, expressions. So for the purpose of the physics derivation graph, an expression appears only once in the entire graph and all derivations that use that same expression would refer to the same node in the graph. In contrast, the inference rules are not considered unique nodes and those can uh, appear as many times as they're needed. Same for the feed nodes. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about these inference rules because these are really one of the major building blocks of the physics derivation graph cap capability. So there's uh, basically think of it as all the rules uh, or methods that you learned in a physics in a math class, such as like uh, algebra and calculus, uh, made into discrete functions that can apply to expressions. So enumerating these, uh, you know, there's there's many different math subdomains and each of these subdomains have associated inference rules. So I am not claiming that I have a complete list of inference rules, but my guess is that there may be hundreds of them. So it's perfectly enumerable in, in my uh, opinion, but it's something that uh, would need to be worked on to sort of expand to cover the scope of all mathematics that is used in physics. And again, each one of these is a discrete set of operations that can be applied and verified using a, a computer algebra system. All right, so just to, to recap, we've covered a lot of new jargon. So the expressions are the mathematical uh, equalities, and then they're all unique within the entire graph. In contrast, there's another type of node called the inference rules, and these inference rules relate different expressions and they are not unique in the graph. So I've chosen basically to make the graph representation a nodes and edges presentation. So I'm, I'm not associating specific properties with each of the edges. They're just a directed uh, graph. But I'm using three different types of nodes. All right, so now let's sort of ask, okay, that's the idea. Has this been done? I think the answer is probably not, as far as I can tell. Um, and there are some previous projects that attempted, I think, to work in this area, so Equation Map and Formula Database, but those are both now, now no longer available. Um, so Formula Database and uh, Equation Map are both in the web archive, so you can sort of access the old content there. Um, the equation map editor uh, is basically very similar, except initially they, that project did not have inference rules present. It was just a way of drawing out uh, expressions in LaTeX and connecting them with uh, directed edges. Um, they later introduced the inference rules after I uh, talked with them. There are uh, step uh, explicit methods of making steps presented on the web. So Symbol Lab is an example of that. That's a currently active website, um, but they rely on a, a linear sort of presentation of the steps. So the, the concept of a graph isn't there. Um, I don't think they're backed by a graph database in my, my guess, but again, it's proprietary, so it's hard to know that. In contrast, um, the physics derivation graph 
is under a Creative Commons license, so you're perfectly uh, welcome to use it and remix it as you see fit. Um, and all the source code is available on GitHub. Right. So the all I've been talking about so far is a graph-based presentation and sort of input method. But that's not to say that um, we want to discard all of the historical sort of ca capability. So the, the cool sort of export feature of the physics derivation graph is that you can generate a text file, TEX, and you can generate PDFs from that text. And so you can recover the original uh, sort of linear presentation format that you might want for a paper or presentation. All right, so that closes out the sort of overview of the main idea. Next, I'm going to talk about some use cases, and then I'll talk about a couple challenges that the project faces. So who do I see benefiting from the physics derivation graph? So I think my first sort of target audience is physics students. Uh, so this comes from sort of personal experience as a physicist. I always wondered, like, we know all these things. What's the big picture, right? How does everything relate? And so this is the physics derivation graph is really me scratching my own itch as a student saying, how do I know that these different subtopics in physics all sort of uh, rely on the same tools and expressions? So I think, and not that I expect any students to actually use the physics derivation graph to do their homework or solve exam problems. It's more just a conceptual uh, grounding for the different sort of relations of physics topics. Uh, so the other sort of, as a you know, math undergraduate in mathematics, um, my other question was like, when am I going to use this stuff? And so the easy answer is the inference rules really uh, make it explicit about why am I using calculus? In what fields does calculus get used? Same thing for algebra. So that's kind of reassuring as a mathematics student to see where these tools get applied in physics. And then uh, I think teachers could potentially benefit from sort of like making explicit what are the bounds on the knowledge, how uh, does what I'm showing you fit into the grander picture, right? So there's some sort of like big picture questions that could potentially be addressed by the physics derivation graph. Um, but again, it's not a teaching tool per se. It's more like you can point to the physics derivation graph and say there's a reference for how everything's related and what the frontiers are. Another uh, major audience in my uh, expectation is researchers. So having uh, a clear and explicit method of presenting known knowledge in a verifiable method that is uh, able to be uh, put into a, a LaTeX format for, for, for reports, I think could be very beneficial. That said, I don't expect researchers to use the physics derivation graph as the primary sort of like, uh, journal, uh, let's say a lab notebook format for recording their work. I think more of uh, documenting what's known. Um, so I, I'm, again, I'm not expecting the underlying tools to change. It's more of a reference for advancing research. That In that same sort of audience group, I think having a reference to the physics derivation graphs um, content in terms of this is an explicit derivation of with all the steps and enumerated assumptions could be very helpful in publications. You probably wouldn't include the physics derivation graph content in the paper, whether it be something like a, an online supplemental material um, and it would make explicit the relations between the work you're doing as uh, with other work as well as all the steps that you take to get to that uh, result. And then the other sort of journal-based question that I've always faced is like when I'm reading through papers, it's never clear to me like, is this person just making up this content or are they really founded in some advanced field that I have no familiarity with? And distinguishing those is non-trivial. Um, and sometimes it's not clear whether I should be taking the person seriously or uh, whether I should be able to follow around the steps that they're, they're taking. So again, Having a journal article rely on a physics derivation graph uh, 
uh, specificity of the steps and what sort of mathematical techniques are being used would be very, very beneficial to the audience that's reading this. Again, that puts a big load on the uh, content author, you know, above and beyond just the, the writing of the document and the publication of the pictures, but also making all the mathematics explicit and specific. But that would help the audience uh, consume the, uh, their content and, and determine some of the validity of whether that's believable or not. All right, moving on to the, the challenges that I sort of see uh, with this project. I'll cover two of them, although there are many more. The first is validation of steps. Now this turns out to be very useful. You can, you can check that the input expression and the output expression are appropriately related, and that can be checked using something like SimPy or Sage. But the correctness of a given step in a derivation does not make the overall derivation valid. So you still have to be able to relate it back to a physical experiment or measurement of a system uh, in nature. So I'm going to give you a, a little demo of what would a step validation look like in SAGE. I'm not currently using SAGE, but it, just to say this is a one method of implementing a computer algebra system check. So back to our original example. I'll focus on one single step where I uh, invert both sides of an equation. And so that could be uh, validated using uh, SAGE. And so the SAGE code over here on the left-hand side uh, prints the, the expected output. And then you can compare that expected output to what was provided by the user. So you can uh, rewrite that in a variety of different ways, um, and you can uh, get back Boolean values, and then that can sort of increase your confidence as to uh, whether the input is valid or not. So you could use this to automatically validate all the steps in the physics derivation graph, assuming that the uh, content is expressed in Sage or SymPy or whatever your favorite computer algebra system is. That sort of introduces uh, a question of like which which one is most useful, and so my personal bias is towards um, computer algebra systems that are free and open source, um, and that can therefore can be inspected by other people, as well as improving the accessibility to all people um, interested in the project. One major uh, constraint in using the a computer algebra system is to make sure that it is amenable to all the different subtopics that might arise in the physics derivation graph. So example, direct notation and calculus and algebra um, and linear algebra. All these different topics would need to be uh, checked by the computer algebra system. That introduces another sort of question, well, if we want to do all these different topics, so I, I've given a few illustrations here, um, and, and, and what topics, or what expressions and steps would need to be validated. So having a, a list of test cases in terms of expressions and inference rules is, is a useful way of determining from the potential pool of computer algebra systems which ones are going to be uh, useful. So having that set of test cases is, is the first step. And then we introduce uh, yet another challenge, which is uh, how do we input the expressions, right? We, we, we are confident that the expressions can be provided in LaTeX, but then the sort of ambiguity of LaTeX introduces a new problem uh, for, for how to handle a computer algebra system. So you have this trade-off between conciseness and preciseness. So we could deal with that by having a sort of universal method of describing a given expression. And so abstract syntax trees are a way of accomplishing that. And you can get potentially from LaTeX to an abstract syntax tree, although it will likely involve some intervention by a user to sort of take the initial 
input uh, and then have a AST guessed by the program and then have the user say, no, that's not what I actually meant. Here's more specificity. So there'll be some iterative development uh, input process for the user and the physics derivation graph to negotiate what an accurate and universal representation is. So I think this takeaway for the computer logic system as aspect is that there are a couple good choices. So Sage and SimPy to me are the, the best options. I'm currently using SimPy in the physics derivation graph. And the input method currently that I'm using is LaTeX with some conversion to SimPy um, that needs user intervention. All right. So the computer algebra, computer algebra systems uh, was one aspect of uh, the physics derivation graph that is useful but challenging. And I'm going to talk about uh, visualization as a challenge. Again, there's a whole bunch of options, and there's some complexity in what the trade-offs are between those. So I know that I need three different types of nodes. I want to navigate that structure visually, and I want to have some way of uh, the user providing input to that graph. So again, my bias is towards free and open source uh, software. And so D3JS and GraphViz both sort of rise to the top for me. Uh, and I'm using both of those. All right. So now I'll cover, you know, what what is the status of this project, and 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 why is it hard? So we have a lot of content in the physics derivation graph, almost a thousand expressions, um, and hundreds of symbols, but that's just scraping the surface. There's so much physics content to to include. We're currently using LaTeX as an input, as I mentioned. And we're currently displaying that in a graph format using uh, LaTeX to uh, static PNGs, and then using GraphViz and D3JS to, to present the graphs. All of that runs on a website, derivationmap.net, uh, using a Python Flask web interface. And we're using JSON on the back end to store all that content. So all that is sort of what's currently a snapshot of happening. Um, but there's a lot of work to be done, and so I, I don't think it's reasonable for one person to do it, but I, I, it would be awfully surprising if physicists were really interested in manually entering all this content. So, as I mentioned, there's a balance between the input method in LaTeX, the validation method in a computer algebra system, and then scaling this thing up, right, to like, uh, thousands and thousands of nodes of expressions and all the validation that that would entail. So my process is, is you know, just find the issue, enumerate it, and then figure out what to, how to proceed. So this is my, my current process. My goal personally as, a, as the project owner is to have a method that is sustainable. I don't want to burn out. So I expect for the, to work on this for a long time. I've been working on it for quite a while. And the sort of graph here shows that I've been working on it since 2015. That's only because I migrated to GitHub in 2014. So I've been working on the project since about 2011 or so. One challenge that makes um, collaboration on this hard is that it relies on a lot of different fields of expertise, um, so databases, data design, program architecture, uh, documentation, graph visualization, abstract syntax trees, HTML, JavaScript, right? And so like, it's just a, a huge variety of entry points for anyone with any of these skills to, to, to work on a project. All right, so I'm gonna propose uh, one last uh, idea that uh, you, you know, you've, you've maybe in the back of your head, well, this is a good idea, but it's really complicated to scale. Well. It turns out we already have this huge database of, of physics knowledge um, in written format in the archive. So uh, let's say you've got uh, many terabytes of data. Extracting all the math content out of that is itself a big challenge. And then figuring out how to get that math content into something like the physics derivation graph, where it has a lot more structure, will take um, some very uh, skillful investment. Okay, so I'll close up here with citations to where you can learn more information. I've got a blog, I've got a website, I've got source code. 
and we've got a Google Groups uh, and a YouTube channel.